Lazy Legget Loaf. This recipe is my attempt to produce a great tasting baguette-ish or ciabatta-like substance without needing any skill or putting forth much effort. Only special equipment required is a food grade spray bottle of water, which is a useful thing to have around anyway. This video is sponsored by Vistal Supply, the maker of that natural bamboo cheese board, which would make a great gift. Follow my link in the description and enter the discount code ADAM10 at checkout to get 10% off. We're gonna do a single portion of dough in a small sealable container. Glass is best. The acid in the dough could draw harmful chemicals from plastic and some metals, certainly aluminum. In goes half a cup of water, then like a pinch of yeast, maybe an eighth of a teaspoon at most, then half a teaspoon of salt, no matter what anyone tells you that will not kill the yeast. And it's easier to integrate evenly if you add it to the water instead of the flour. One cup of bread flour. Grab a silicone spatula and use that to just bring this together. This is a no-need bread dough. If you're looking for a recipe with precise precise measurements, look elsewhere. Here's how to judge the hydration of this by eye. It should be just wet enough that it has no visible dry patches. Just wet enough. If it does have visible dry patches, then add a little bit of water, and that spray bottle is a great way of adding a tiny little bit. There we go. It's wet enough that it kind of glistens all over, but it's still pretty firm. Cover this up. Some people say you need to leave a gap in the seal so the yeast can breathe, but I've never noticed a difference. Okay, you probably can't bake this today. If you want bread as soon is tomorrow, let it sit out most of the day until it's really noticeably risen, like that, and then toss it in the fridge overnight, which is what we're going to do this time. The best way to do it, however, is to mix it up and throw it straight into the fridge for many days, a week even, no counter rise. The longer and slower the rise, the better the flavor, and you could stack up a whole bunch in there and have dates written on them so you can have bread any time. In our case, we did a table rise followed by the fridge, and now it's the next day. Grab a baking sheet and lay on a piece of parchment paper. Grab your super sticky dough out of the fridge, and rather than flour your hands, just get them wet. Water can be a perfectly effective lubricant. Peel it out of the container while deflating it as little as possible. This is way easier if it's cold. And just stretch it out into a log that's as long as your baking sheet is diagonally. No complicated folding or shaping procedures. Just stretch it out and put it onto the parchment. You might be thinking, isn't that going to stick to the parchment without any flour or anything? Yes, it is, and we're counting on that. Give it a spray to keep the top from drying out and just let it sit out uncovered for an hour, hour and a half. Don't expect it to proof up a ton, but it should look a little puffier before you bake. The fact that the dough sticks hard to the parchment prevents it from spreading out really flat, and it forces some of its rise upward. It's like using a couche, except zero work. Heat your oven to 500 Fahrenheit, convection if you've got it, and when it's good and hot, throw your tray in right in the middle and spray it with a ton of water. I'm spraying both the bread and the walls of the oven. This replicates the effect of professional steam injection ovens without bothering to put a pan of boiling water or something in the bottom. You want to open it up and spray it again every minute or two for the first few minutes. This keeps the outside of the bread from setting up hard before it gets a chance to oven spring. That's when steam builds up inside the dough and puffs it up, giving you a nice open structure. Basically, whenever I see the dough has gone visibly dry, I spray it again every minute or two until it seems to have puffed up as much as it's gonna puff, like 10 minutes after it went in. Then you could stop spraying it if you want, but I like to keep spraying every four or five minutes because that gets you a really shiny crust. One of the advantages of laying the dough down diagonally is it makes it really easy for you to reach in there and spray the back of the loaf. If you're not sure when it's done, you could always take its temperature, pull it when the internal temp is 190 to 200 Fahrenheit, but I find that when the crust is deep amber, it's done. That one took 22 minutes. I'm sure your times will vary. When it's cool enough to touch, you can just peel it off the parchment paper. And look at that. Between the very wet, no-knead dough and the fact that we didn't do any complex shaping work, this is still flatter than a baguette, but who's to say that's a bad thing? In the mirror universe, where this happened to develop as the traditional method, me with a goatee is probably saying, Yeah, you know, this newfangled baguette thing doesn't get you that same flat look that tradition really demands, but it's an okay substitution. Long live the empire. All right, let's slice her open. Audibly thin, crispy crust, and even down there in the thinnest part, we've got an open, fluffy structure. 
I am totally jumping on the no need bandwagon. Water and time achieve basically all the same chemical and biological effects that you get from traditional methods. Don't get excited, that's not white wine, it's vino verde. Pretty much the only white-ish wine I actually drink. Now if only I had some cheese, dry sausage, and homemade pickles, and well would you look at that! Now if only I had a cheese knife, and well would you look at that! Makes this a perfect grab-and-go situation for a party or a picnic. Thanks again to Vistal Supply for sponsoring this video. Get 10% off this board with my link and code in the description. Those homemade pickles, by the way, easiest sweet pickle ever. Whole 12 ounce bottle of rice vinegar goes into a glass bowl. Then as much sugar as you can dissolve into it cold, about a cup or less if you don't like them too sweet. Chop up a couple cups of veggies. I'm doing cauliflower, green beans, and radishes. Pickled cauliflower is delicious, but be warned, it's kind of stinky. Throw that covered into the fridge for at least a day, and man, that is just one of my favorite meals. And that lazy loaf has better flavor and texture than anything I can buy in my little town. If you have an awesome French bakery down the street, don't bother. But if you're on your own, like me, give this a shot. Let me know how it goes.